hope you're ready for another terrific episode of The Practical Divorce Lawyer, because here it is. Everybody, in case you're new here, I'm Jonathan Noble, divorce and family law attorney, and I want to make a video, sort of a greatest hits video. I, I've been involved in many, many divorce cases where there's a narcissist on the other side of the case. So I just want to share a little inside info through the lens of an experienced divorce lawyer. So we'll call this the greatest hits, things that I see during the course of divorce litigation where uh, the other side is a narcissist. Uh, number one, they exaggerate a lot. They exaggerate about the value of things or they misrepresent facts to their lawyer or a mediator or even the court sometimes that are easily proven wrong. But in their mind, that lamp that you brought into the marriage from your uh, college dorm is worth a thousand dollars that's incredible i mean those are kind of outlandish things that i've seen uh in my time uh they make extreme claims okay followed by small slow concessions they basically want 99 percent of the marital assets and then they'll offer 97 percent for them and three percent for the other person and they'll slowly try to ratchet it. Well, as an experienced divorce lawyer, I've seen this so many times. Uh, and if opposing counsel's experienced, he's seen it too. He's almost embarrassed to make another offer like that, where it's just not in the realm of possibility if the case gets litigated. But oftentimes, a narcissist doesn't care if they burn the earth and every dollar you've ever earned. They want to be the one to be in control. So they make these terrible, outrageous offers to settle a case and then ratchet it down slowly. It's just a waste of time and a waste of money, to be honest with you. Um, they make these crazy take it or leave it offers. Take it or leave it. That's it. You know, I know experienced counsel, and I'll include myself in this, we don't make these take it or leave it offers, especially if there's a lot of assets and it's complicated, a lot of moving parts. Give me a break. Take it or leave it. Uh, what is it, What are we on the schoolyard now where uh, you have to do what the what the bully says you do? It's ridiculous, but it happens, unfortunately. Sometimes if there's a new lawyer on the other side who doesn't quite get it yet, it doesn't understand how a narcissist might operate. They'll pass along a take it or leave it off air, at which time, you know, we'll just put it in the shredder. It, do it doesn't even dignify a counteroffer. They back up, okay, where you're close to settling the case and then they change their mind before they uh, actually have to sign a marital settlement agreement. Mm. Narcs do it all the time. They want to prolong this for as long as possible. Uh, they... Take your offer under consideration and never make a counteroffer. So they want you to keep negotiating against yourself, which no experienced lawyer will ever do. Either you make a counteroffer or the case keeps moving, which is another thing I'm going to talk about in another video. You're going to want your lawyer to keep the case moving forward, and there's ways to do that. Um, their lawyer makes a threat, some sort of like ridiculous threat. And whenever I get a threat, I'll know that uh, the lawyer is either a new lawyer who hasn't represented many people in a, in a contentious divorce, or they are too emotionally involved in the case where the narcissist has sucked them in with all the stories about how bad your client is. So they'll acquiesce and make some sort of a threat, which is laughable. It's just laughable. Or they watch too much TV uh, where the lawyers are threatening each other. It's absolutely preposterous. No experienced divorce lawyer is going to take a threat seriously. If, in fact, it shows a real weakness if a lawyer threatens another lawyer. It's just ridiculous, and it hurts the client 
who has a lawyer who makes a threat case. It doesn't work. Um, they make personal or bullying attacks on the other lawyer or the other side. Sends a clear signal to most good, experienced divorce lawyers. You don't have a leg to stand on. So here's the point of the video. Don't get intimidated uh, by the tactics the other side might be using. It's all one big nothing burger to get you off your stand, all right? Before you uh, hire a divorce lawyer, go talk to them, interview them, pay for their time for an initial consultation. It'll be the best money you ever spent. And if you're divorcing a narcissist, unfortunately, there's nothing you can do to force them to accept an offer. They have the last say. So even if their lawyer is excellent and they are the voice of reason, if they don't want to settle and they just want to drag this out for whatever reason, unfortunately, the laws in most jurisdictions that I'm familiar with allow that to happen to a degree. There does come a time where after a while, uh, the laws will step in and it'll either go to trial or not. But uh, best advice I can give you is an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. If you could avoid marrying a potential narcissist, you win. You win because then you don't need a divorce. All right. Share this with somebody walking around blind who needs to see this. Like, comment, subscribe. Love to have you as part of the community.